What's going on, homies? You're listening to NPK Live, the Hydroponics Podcast. You're listening to NPK Live. To all the listeners around the world, you're listening to NPK That's me angry faces on Facebook. Fuming, fucking absolutely fuming. So, Raf, well, I'm just going to talk about the weed program that I watched last night. So yeah, there was weed, on, there was yeah. weed on the telly last night, and it was on a UK telly, and it was all about weed. And I seen weed plants, and there was people growing weed on this program. On the right, program, we're ready to go. People are saying the sounds okay through here. Yeah. Sounds okay. Raf, let's shut this door. Let's get going. It's a corporate takeover. So, big shout out to Professor Green and his weed show. There we go. Ready to go. Corporate takeover. Boom. Let it snow. Go on. Let it go. Lovely. Here we go. Coatsy, whatever you did then, everyone's just saying it's sorted. So, whatever you did there, remember, because we're good to go. Yeah, Coatsy's fixed it. We are podcast 129. A corporate takeover. Um, if you need <laughs> Jason Ralph Smith says agent need help. We we know you need help, Jason. But um, is it our help you need? We don't know whose help does he need, or is it the industry needs help? The yes, he's in in yeah, need okay. of our help. So come on, podcast one two nine. A corporate takeover. The hydroponics industry. Come on, give it to me. What is it? So, what are you talking about? Introduction. Yeah. An industry built on people risking the freedom to grow a plant. What plant? The cannabis plant. Okay. In the US. In the US. Just in the US? Well, everywhere. It's, it's illegal in the UK. We're not allowed, you're not allowed to grow it in the UK. Okay. People are going to jail for growing a plant. Okay. Decades of hard work, risk yeah. and reward to build up the industry from the ground up. This has been 20, 30 years of people working from day one to try and build up the industry to where it is today. And now, in the US and many other countries, cannabis has become medicinally legal. And some places have got it recreationally legal. Um, I've got a few stats for you. Okay. Ooh. North America, marijuana, cannabis sales grew by 30% in 2016 to $6.7 billion. In North America, sales are projected to hit 20, 20. 2 billion by 2021 and that's assuming a growth rate of 25% and to put this in perspective the dot com the internet grew at 22% so that's an incredible amount of uh, growth over the last few years since it became legal so basically what you're telling me there that's a lot of cannabis being sold and produced yeah well in the US alone uh, it says there by 2021 the industry is expected to hit 20.2 billion okay so with that, big money is involved and there's big players moving in. People with a lot of money that are buying up businesses to try and control a segment of the industry. Is it good? Is it bad? And that's what we're talking about today. Well, to be honest with you, that's what I was talking about earlier on. Before, while we were trying to get the sound sorted, I mentioned about uh, Professor, Green, uh, Professor Green's programme, that his documentary that he done about cannabis. In the, um, it, it was based in the UK. Mm. And it was about cannabis in the UK. Mm -hmm. And it hits on, he, he mentioned some of the factors that you've mentioned there about a corporate takeover. And he, he was talking about small um, small cannabis growers who were grown illegally in the UK uh, to provide themselves medicinally or personally with cannabis. Um, now, then he interviewed the guy who was a UK guy who owned a medicinal, uh, what are they called? A dispensary. Dispensary, that's it, thank you. Medicinal dispensary in Cali, in California. Mm -hmm. And he was a guy in a suit. He didn't consume cannabis. He never smoked cannabis. He was there strictly for business because him and a group of people uh, have a corporate company and they bonded together and bought this dispensary and they were talking about the project of how much money it'll make over the next 25 years and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they're also talking about all of the big, 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 big companies that will just in 
instantly buy up the, the industry, and I think that's what you're hitting on here. Exactly. What, yeah. what was the outcome of that? Was it good or bad? For the small little personal uh, farmer who was doing his own little thing, it was bad because mm. um, it was just going to push him out by the wayside, basically. Mm. Well, I want you to bring up, because obviously I've written a few things, and you come in and you freestyle, so I want to hear your opinions. But Jason said, wants us to do a little shout-out. It's CBD hempire.co.uk that's cbd h-e-m-p-i-r-e dot co dot uk he said please ask everyone to visit this on their facebook page and like the license has just been suspended after three years so anyway, everyone that's listening go and visit cbd uk because jason wouldn't have brought it to our attention if it wasn't a a really worthy cause so go and check out the Facebook page and their internet the website and see what see what's saying um, whose li- his license is being suspended cbdhempire.co.uk obviously if Jason's following them they'll be doing good things and big things and for some reason the license has been suspended is it is this because of somebody bigger with more money has managed to take the license what's at, at, or, I, I or, what's or, or, or is it because uh, there's a there's the the people are projecting uh, a company's projecting well the government's projecting a change in the law so they want to remove all of these little companies out the way so they the government can put their big smelly company in the way mm. and control everything once again yeah and this company had a growing license he said uh, Andy Varley's joined as well I think there's only a few people join on for this podcast because it and everyone knows who we're talking about it is the Hawthorne a company, the Hawthorne Group. The Hawthorne Group. Who are a subsidiary of Scott's Miracle Grow, SMG. And they, to basically, to put the whole podcast into a nutshell, they distribute, they are the sole distributor of Roundup for Monsanto. Okay. So that's the link there. Now, people so, may disagree with me and say, no, you're wrong, and there's no actual proof. And it's a misconception that uh, Scott's Miracle Grow is owned by Monsanto. They, distri- they are the sole distributor for Roundup. And the big thing, regardless of all the genetic engineering and all that bullshit that Monsanto do, the big problem that people have with Scott's Miracle Grow is that they distribute Roundup, which has a product called glycophosphate in it. And glycophosphate, which we're going to talk about more later on, um, some people, some uh, research centres think about it causes cancers. Some say uh, it doesn't cause cancers. That's people, everyone's big problem with, with, with this link at the moment. OK, but what I want to know is, see these companies, it's, it's like... This Hawthorne Group, um, Monsanto, um, what's that, Bayer, Bayer? Bayer, Bayer in the process of trying to buy Monsanto, but there's been some um, things put in place. And what's the other one? There's another one. There's a few. There's about eight that probably run the world. Yeah, yeah so, so how, how, how are these companies so, like, big? How are they so big? Yeah. Because they do go business. Let's mm. not get it twisted. These companies aren't multi-billion pound companies because they mess about. These people know how to do business. I think that's what's scaring people. So do these are these companies, are these bothered about the products that they sell or are they bothered about the, the amount of figures it, that they make? It would appear on the face of it that they're bothered by profits. Okay. That must be this. To become a billion dollar company, you've got to be bothered about your profits. Why, why, does, why, why do a lot of... Because all I know is a lot of people... Hey, when you mention these, there's a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of talk about it, isn't there? There's a lot of debate about them, isn't there? Yeah. And the hot topic, aren't they? And I, to be honest, I'm just a normal lad who doesn't really understand it all. I yeah. don't think anybody really understands it. I think there's some secret handshakes that go on, some underhandedness that goes on in the big pharmaceutical world. But do, does it really, or am I just being sceptical? Or is it just the big company selling a load of? Be, Plan feed? Well, I think it's right to be sceptical on this subject because it's very unlikely that everything that these multi-billion pound companies do is all out in the open and everything that we do is completely transparent and there's no um, there's no secret handshake, there's no little brown envelopes and there's no... Under- how, how do you know he's just not, not like a fella like me? Another T, like me. Be, he, to be honest. And he's know, thinking, why is everybody saying I'm just this big conspiracy person? Yeah, it could be. You know, the owner of Scott's Miracle Grow is an ex-fighter jet pilot. Okay. So he's ex-military, so he's got similarities to you. And from what I hear about him, he's got he's quite similar to you in personality as well. He's uh, He goes out, gets what he wants, and he doesn't take no messing. 
I just watch what you're saying here. I'm, I'm, I'm watching what I'm saying. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a, he's a go-getter, um, and he's he's upset people along the way because he's a multi-billionaire. Yeah. You upset a lot of people when you become a billionaire. Um, but the point, the, the, to try and keep the podcast as on track as possible, but we do want to debate some really interested in people's comments here, is um, is that, is it good and is it bad? And I, I don't to, know. to set my opinion out straight know. away, I think it's a mix of both. There's good and there's bad, and it, your opinion is going to become basic, based, you, your opinion will be based on, on how it's going to affect you personally. Yeah. So, if you... Let's do it quickly before we go into like the, the proper good and bad. If you are a patient in the US and you use cannabis to relieve your uh, symptoms or whatever, then the big companies coming and taking over is potentially a good thing yeah. because it's going to federally, it's still illegal in the US. So the big companies taking over or, or coming into the industry, pumping a lot of money into it, making it. Making the government go, oh, there's a lot of tax to be made here, or oh, this has actually got medicinal benefits. It's going to get put. I feel it would get pushed forward a lot quicker. Yeah. So people that are, need cannabis for me medicine and are struggling to get it at the moment, they're going to be like, yeah, please, please, come, 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 make the industry move quicker, yeah. so I can get me medicine quicker. But then you've got all of the the growers mm -hmm. who have not got a license that are permitted by the government on a big scale because the big corporate companies own all of these licenses. Then you'd have a problem then. Right, well, exactly. I've written a few things down. Let me just... A lot of comments are coming in. Um, someone said, didn't Bayer and Monsanto merge? They were about to... There's a block being placed on it because they could become essentially a cartel. Yeah. They're not allowed the monopoly of They Monsanto. become too big. Who decides that they can't be too big? Who, um, who, who said, no, you can't do that? Companies house. <laughs> no. Companies out said no. Bayer and Monsanto. Yeah. Mm, we're, no, not, a, we're not going to give you that. that I, don't know what, I don't know what authority it'd be, but it'll be a US authority or maybe even a a, a council, a world council. Well, he, he is. I want to know who that person is who can pull that string because that's a powerful There's person. Maybe a few people. There'll probably be about 30, 40 people that pull that uh, string. Barley Brown said, I worked for Monsanto for a little doing trials. New varieties of cucumbers and tomatoes, and there was no bad stuff going on that I could see. There you go. So, but, and I don't disagree. See this genetic modification? People have got a big thing about it because Monsanto do bad things. And, and what do. bad things have they done? So, off the top of my head, they will um, say to if they will produce a product for a farmer. Let's say they produce seeds, and that farmer has to buy seeds from them for whatever reason. I'm not, not too sure on it, and then. That plant, because it's been genetically modified, won't get attacked by pests and disease. The farmer's got bountiful harvests, but it doesn't produce any seed, so he can't then take that seed and replant it. So he has to go back to Monsanto every year and buy his seeds from him. And some people think that's a, a, an unscrupulous business practice. Well, isn't it a bit like that, that FIFA fixing? Hmm? Where they're fixing the game? Mm. Well, that's fixing the game, isn't it? It goes on all over uh, the industry. Because Mother Nature didn't say, oh, well, when she created the R plant, you know, at the end of it, it's not going to give more seeds off. She didn't say, oh, run down to Monsanto and knock on Monsanto's door and he'll sell you some more. It's all right. You just have to buy some more seeds. You can yeah. They'll have your plant. Yeah. But you've got to buy seeds from us. There's also the, the whole debate about genetic modification. Wow. In fact, that's a good... You've got me off here on a rant here, because that's a good point. In fact, why don't we all just buy everything off just one person, because they say so? We're, we're allowed to do whatever we want on the planet. We're allowed to take any drug or do anything we want or go anywhere we want. However, we've got to go to one person to do it all and pay them. It's an interesting thought. Uh, experiment think about it I haven't got time to think about it because I'll go too in depth but is it right is it right for one person to have control over so many billions of people is it right for somebody to have a monopoly in charge of the and for a few people to become the richest people mm -hmm. in the world and have mm -hmm. unlimited power and that's the argument I'm putting in mm -hmm. if one person was in control and give you everything that you wanted would you have a reason to dispute that one person's control because mm -hmm. you'd be happy wouldn't you mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have nothing to say? Until you realised how well that person was doing and jealousy sets in, an inherent human trait, and then you start becoming angry and start making up lies and maybe fixing some things that suit you and make them look bad. 
little thought experiment it could go oh this could be a long debate <laughs> I just want to read out what Jason said here up until the 15th of September Empire had a production license I've been consulting Empire has been set up by two guys for the moment Empire are in limbo all plans had to be um, removed they are looking for social support from everyone a letter a very expensive one via the lawyers has been sent so listen I, can just, I don't really know the, the background but I've got enough uh, trust and, and faith in Jason from Autopot that he wouldn't back a cause that wasn't worth backing. Well, I'll back it as well. So we will be we will be but, back it. But don't ask me to write a letter, Jason, because you know what it's, it's like when it when it comes to me writing letters. I'll and write stuff. a letter. You can sign it. We'll get I'll get Steve to write a letter. <laughs> I'll look at it. So back to Barley Brown, who used to work for Monsanto for a brief period, said self suiciding seeds, cutting away from the farmer's cost, but then how to. How do Monsanto make money off giving disease-resistant varieties? It's a two-way street called business. It's a good point. It's a good good point. point. And it's it's a point... Um, I'm just scrolling up the comments. It's you a know, good point that when people... You see, know what the best point about it is, all mm. You know, that none of us are right. And there's oh, no... Yeah, yeah, this is the debate. It's this is the debate. And out debate. And that's what we want... The, the goal of this podcast is to make you think, and maybe make... Hopefully make everybody think about a different viewpoint that they didn't have before the podcast. That's the point. Yeah. And we... The things I'm saying, I don't necessarily believe, and I'm just giving two sides, and the same for Thomas. But something that I will mention, and it's not a popular opinion, is that pharmaceutical companies, they spend 10 years developing an, a specific anti-cancer drug, and they've invested billions. And then when they come to sell that cancer drug, they, they charge a lot of money for it because uh, they need to recoup the costs. Otherwise, they would go to business and they would no longer be able to research cancer drugs. Mm. But then there's the big thing about them that... Oh look at that! That's a that's a scum company because they're charging five hundred pound. They're charging five hundred pound for this tablet that can potentially cure cancer. What they should give it away for free. So there's that whole debate as well. If everyone did that, it's well, just I, not a good well, I'll tell you model. what. Why don't we get our product, our nano product, that we've spent Bruce D's on, yeah, and sell it for cheaper than what it costs us, and see how long we last for? Yeah. It wouldn't happen, would it? There's two sides to every story, and I know I've been I've been monitoring the forums, and Andy's very, like Andy Valley's quite concerned about it. He said in the comment here, I'm concerned about how Hawthorne would distribute their products whilst illegality is here in the UK. I worry they won't want to supply to traditional grow shops. Prediction here: a garden centre, a garden centre chain will begin selling hydro equipment. Definitely. Well, um, I'm just loads of comments coming in. Tesco. So Jason said he just needs. Jason just said he just needs people to go to the Facebook page of Empire and um, and and share, share, share. But to go back to Andy's um, question, yeah, but he, uh, I want to talk about what he's talking about because I'm listen. That'll piss me off because the next thing you're walking down as there with your shopping trolley and you're in the hydroponics aisle and you're fucking buying all sorts of shit in the hydroponics aisle and I'm like skint yeah. because they've got no job anymore because Asda and Tesco are having price wars on 600 watt light kits exactly I've actually got um, as, as I've been monitoring these Facebook forum chats somebody's raised the same point Andy someone said once they made the statement of saying once they buy enough companies this is Hawthorne they won't need any distributors because it will be in every Walmart and Home Depot so this guy was from the US and the reply from Chris Hegedorn who's the does Director. does Walmart own Asda? Yeah, they do. Yeah, thank you. So, the uh, <sighs> was that an argument you've been having with someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and, the, uh, yeah. The, I just the, want. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, Chris. So the reply from Chris Hegedorn was this word for word: Why would we endanger our rapidly growing business in hydro shops in the US by rolling the dice that people would go to big box stores to buy our stuff? It just would be a stupid thing to do, and we try to avoid doing stupid things. So no, not going to Home Depot. And that's a weird for weird quote from Chris Hegedorn, who's the director of Hawthorne Group, who's the company that's buying up all of these other companies. These other companies are big ones: Botanica, GH. One thing I know: they're all liars. Gavita, the liars, and most recently, Cam you, Filters. You know how I know the liars, and I know, and I don't even know them personally. So no offence. For me calling you a liar, but you're a fucking liar. You know why? Because you know as soon as you get to sniff of the money, yeah, it is all changed so faster than James Bond means, let me tell you. Well, let's take a quick, very quick 
change of direction. Let's actually know we're going to keep current direction. We're going to talk about the bad first, and we're going to scoot through these points. Um, now I've written down that because Hawthorne is a wholly owned subsidiary of Scott's Miracle Grow. Yeah. And Scott's Miracle Grow, the immediate link is to Monsanto yeah. and the distribution of Roundup. So there's the immediate bad for people. Um, the, we've mentioned before that glycophosphate is one of the key ingredients in Roundup and it's considered a possible carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer and the California Environmental Protection Agency. But, on the other hand, the European Food Safety Authority, the US Environmental Protection Agency, and the US Environmental Protection... Oh, I've said that twice. <laughs> and the US, the US Environmental Protection Agency... It was a typo. Yeah, typo. Don't consider it a carcinogen. So there's two research models there who say it does cause cancer, two, people, two agencies that say it don't. So whether it does or it doesn't, how good or bad are those trials, you're not going to probably bet your health on it not being a carcinogen. So that's why people have got a big problem with, with Scott's and, and probably Hawthorne because people think that the Roundup causes cancer. Well, you know what i seen last night on Professor Green's show? Sorry, Professor Green, you're taking all the hit for me talking about this weed today because it was on your show, and that's only why I'm talking about it. Um, I was watching everyone buy weed on the Silk Road on a tour browser. Yeah. And he was getting it, and one, one of the, one of the, the, the arguments was the, the person who's buying the weed, he was like, look at this. It's, the good factor about all of these corporate companies taking over the cannabis industry in the US is because, look at this for a variety. He said, I'm on eBay yeah, for cannabis. He says, I love cannabis, so you've been smoking cannabis for a long time and whatever. And on this 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 thing, it had every variety and strain and every it, it had all packaging, it had all of the, the regulations and the THC content and the ins and outs of a cat's ass about it, to be honest with you. Mm. And it... It, it it was impressive, and it was the knowledge of what was available because of these big companies. If them big companies weren't around, that stuff wouldn't happen. We talk about that in a minute on the on the good side of it, which is the. But I just side. want to talk about it now. I know, but you're messing up your structure, bro. Go on then. So can we get back to structure, please? I like structure. I want to talk about. Uh, I want to give because hopefully I'm going to tag Chris Hegedorn in this podcast when I, I post it onto some forums, and this is something that you can do um, because obviously the Monsanto link is tarnishing your reputation and from what I've read from different reports sales are also dropping on Roundup through Scots because of this reputation that it's got so I've written down something here this is from a you know what's article. funny about it sorry to interrupt because uh, I know you like you like you are really into this one because I can tell by the way you've postured up and everything <laughs> do you know what I mean it's like proper kicking off in here is how these companies are like big evil people and they sell like roundup. What was the question? Nothing. Oh, you just. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Let me carry on. So now we've posed the problem to um, the Hawthorne and Scott's Miracle Grow. So what can they do? So I've written something down here that Scott's SMG generates for. Excuse me. Generates 5.5 percent of its 2.8 billion in total sales from the Monsanto weed killer, which is roughly 154 million dollars. Yeah, no. but it's losing sales, and, it, and, it's, and it's doing more harm than good to, to the reputation by maintaining that Monsanto Scotch Miracle Grow agreement. But if it severed ties with Monsanto to push forward in the emerging cannabis industry, would that make a difference to people's opinions of Scotts and ultimately Hawthorne, who's bought up all these hydroponic? Uh, not retailers, uh, manufacturers. If if Scott severed all links with with Monsanto yeah. and said, "Listen, you, we distribute the product that you make, and it's really it, people don't like us for it, so fuck off." Yeah, we've got a cannabis market here that's potentially uh, curing people of cancer and other yeah. ailments. Um, is that why they're doing it though, or because of the profit? Well, it's going to be the profit, isn't it? They're Come really on. Making business. Yeah, let's get to it. They're not thinking, oh, fucking hell, F Liz, she's got arthritis in her left hand. Let's stop doing business with fucking them and let's change. Raph's saying something to me. And I haven't got a clue what he's saying. Where has he gone? I don't know. Customer? Well, there's a customer. So I want you to. Um, 
I want people to send in the comments because I'm just going to go and see a customer very quickly. Oh, yeah. um, and if Scott's did cut all ties with Miracle Grow, would that mean that you feel better about buying Hawth in inverted commas Hawthorne products, which is now Botanic Air, Gavita, uh, Can Filters, and GH, and all any future products? All I know is that everybody's folding. Yep, you wouldn't. Yes, Eric. How are we? The only structure I need is in my hand. Spoken like a true, true fucking realist, eh, Bright? Not half. The only thing is, the, stru the structure in my hand has been the demise of many people, pal. The demise of many people. Because of all of this conglomerate bullshit. It's all because who's going to sign the line and say, yeah, the Lord has passed? So, you know, complicated shit. You know what I do want to know is, you know what's an interesting thing? You know if they did legalise cannabis in the UK, you know that they delegalised it, would they free all the people who've been locked up for for anything to do with it? You know what I mean? That, that was just an interesting thought that I was thinking. Some strange shit. Because I don't really bother thinking about Monsanto and all of this too much because there's not much I can really do about it. Obviously, I know what, what's going on and what they're up to, but it really fucking frustrates me because it is all part of a load of corporate bullshit that I believe anyway. And you could be there forever and a day discussing it and debating it. But to be honest, there's not really much us little guys can do about it. Because we're not in a position to, other than a podcast, and talk about it. And that isn't going to make them fucking change the ways, is it? So, I don't know. It's all a bit... I don't know, you know. I don't know, did they? That, that would be interesting to know. I, you know what? I didn't even fucking think about that. Yeah. So in America, when the laws passed, did people get released? Somebody saying anything thinks they did. Yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting fucking fact. Because you know, imagine that. Imagine you were sitting in jail for growing cannabis if it, I don't know, five years. You got a five year sentence, and then the next thing, oh hey, cannabis is legal, man, and you're still sitting in jail. <laughs> That'd be a bit of a shit deal, wouldn't it? <laughs> Not half. So. Stephen's going to be back in a minute today, um, boy, with the script of all this stuff, but I know he's really loving. All I know is that when it does become legal in the UK, I believe that all of this shit that Steve's saying is probably true. And Walmart won't keep their... their, their they'll just distribute all hydroponics equipment. Saying that, though, I don't know, because then will, will there be a licence? The little growers won't have a licence, and the big companies will, so would uh, I don't know I don't know it gives me a headache thinking about this stuff seriously it does Adam says we need to stand firm and stand up for what we believe in these days I don't even know what that is anymore fucking hell because at the end Nobody listens to us, do they? They just do what they want, don't they? It's just all, it is a bit of a conspiracy. All I know is I just get whiffed in. I'm just like, I just think, fuck it. So, basically, and what I do know is the customers need saving and the customers are getting saved. So, sorry we had to interrupt the podcast, but, you know, we've got to keep growing, I mean going. Just 
see, it's mad. That's what I mean, the world's confused about it. That's right, and thank you for that piece of information. So, some people have been released and some people haven't. Half the country's fucking legal and half the country isn't. Our country doesn't know what it's doing, and some countries are legal and some countries aren't. And, like, you know what? It's just... It's all a bit of a headache, isn't it? You know, like, in a, for you guys in, in, in the US and that, you know, half the country, you may, the other half may as well just be legal. Come on, stop messing around. And then you just best tell our country... I don't know. I don't really know whether I'm for or against it to be legal, to be honest with you. I really don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Hmm. I know Steve's coming back to, to give us your, his statistics. It's quite interesting, really. Customers are my best friends, mate. Customers, the MPK customers are the MPK family. So they are priority number one. And if Steve shouts me, I'll have to go as well. Because, yeah, no offence, I love my customers more than I love the podcast. Sorry, podcast fans, but I do. But saying that, though, some of the podcast fans are customers as well. So I suppose I love you twice as much. Now that's complicated, isn't it? <laughs> Don't don't get it twisted, though, podcast fans. I love yous as well, but you know, you know what I'm saying. It's fucking. It's going to be a long podcast. This one, I can feel it. I agree, Adam. It would be better if you just let us get on with it. Well, um, did you see that thing uh, again on Professor Green's show? It was in Durham. Now, Durham's relaxed the legislation on cannabis growing. And basically what they're saying is they won't come to your house providing that they don't get any reports. So one guy is taking on that is that, you know, all his neighbours know he grows cannabis. Um, and they all like him. He gets on with the neighbours, and nobody's going to phone the, the coppers. So he's allowed to grow his... He, I don't know, I think he had about 10 different strains, 10 plants, 10 different strains, all sorts of different bits and bobs. And he was just happy as Larry, just cracking on with it. Do you know what I mean? But then, obviously, not everybody gets on with the neighbours. So you might live next to a right twat who doesn't like you, who knows you're growing two plants, and just keeps fucking phoning the, the coppers on you, so... You know, it's a bit of a catch-22, that one. Not everybody gets on with the neighbours. Oh, here's Steve. I apologise. However, up. customers always come first. See, I didn't knew you'd say that, because I was just been saying that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's the comments been? They were all slating you, to be honest. Let's have a quick look at these comments. Uh, right. Have you been reading them out? I've been going for gold. Have you been reading them out? No, but you know me. Right, so Eric's joined. Hello, Yeah, I know. Eric. Said hello to Eric. I'm saying hello. I was speaking to him last night. And the good work, fellas. Need to do some work for change. I'll watch it all later. Thank you for joining for us, bud. Adam, have you answered Adam? He said, yeah. What? Yeah, OK. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Need to stand firm. Josh said there were a few that were released to a dude. Yeah, some. I've spoke to Josh. Well, hello, Josh. Hello, Simon. I'm saying hello to everyone. Josh has just been educating me because basically what I was saying yeah. is because you like to talk about your stuff, I like to talk about real stuff. So I wanted to know, well... My I, stuff's not real. Well, to be honest, yeah, okay. You know Thank what you. I mean? Well, I, what, I, what I wanted to know is... Uh, but I forgot something at the same time. Is okay. I wanted to know if cannabis was made legal in the UK, mm -hmm. if... Whoever in was in, in jail at that time for a cannabis offence, mm. a criminal offence, would they be released? But I forgot to, I, I forgot that can, that legislation's already been passed in the US. And Josh kindly informed me that 
in the US, some people have been released. Mm. It's a tricky one because the government probably still see that person as having committed the crime when that law was in place. So you committed the crime when that law was in place, so you should do the remainder. But it's no longer illegal and you're in jail for something that's currently legal. So yeah. it's a bit of a mad one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Chris said, hey, Thomas and Steve, he misses our nights at the Chinese restaurant. Well, listen, there's nothing stopping you from taking us out now. No, nothing, nothing at all. You just, can come down and take us out any time. Just as Mr. Scorthorne. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Right, I was saying um, about Scott and Hawthorne cutting ties with Monsanto. Oh, would yeah. They, would they improve relationships? Would they? And they may say, well, it's not the right business decision. But I put some figures together, which, so, me, b businessman Brooks, I put some f figures together, and it's quite interesting, actually. So, I've worked out that if Hawthorne Group, with their companies, their manufacturers, Botanica, Gavita, GH, Cam, and others, if they took 0.1% of revenue from the estimated 20.2 billion, that's going to happen in 2021, that equals 20 million pounds in revenue. 20 million dollars in revenue and that would only grow and grow and grow and if we up that a little bit and we we're a bit a little bit more confident if they took 0.5 percent of that 20 billion it would generate 100 million dollars which is just shy of what they are making selling round up so they could cut ties with monsanto i'm probably going to get fucking killed after saying this cut ties with monsanto get rid of that stigma concentrate on the cannabis industry take 0.5% of the profits predicted for 2021. They've already started to make the profits that they were making from Roundup. People don't think they're a bastard and they're moving into an industry that is loved by a huge amount of people. That's that's my answer. It could be a good business move for them. Mm -hmm. um, so about the next part I was going to say is spot on the Facebook forum because some of people's concerns is they're buying up all these manufacturers and let's not get it wrong. They're not buying shit manufacturers, are they? These are buying companies that are certified, been in the business yeah. for decades and produced the top quality products. Botanica and GH, correct me if I'm wrong, people in the US, two of the biggest selling nutrients in the US. Being bought. Gavita, correct me if I'm wrong, bought. the biggest lighting company in the UK, easy. Can. Uh, in Europe, probably, and in the U US, probably. Then they've gone and bought Can. Can is what we stock in the shop. Yeah, we, we do. believe in can. Yep. Can filters, uh, Isomax. So they're not buying shit products. So where is it going? Where is it going? So people saying that will these pro will Hawthorne take these products, give them to Walmart for a, uh, a small margin, but Walmart will spend millions with them and basically put out all these small hydro companies out of business. And the reply from Chris Hegedorn was, um, They've got a rapidly growing business in hydro shops. Why would they threaten that business by taking it all off them and giving it to Walmart? Where growers might go, fuck you, I'm not going to Walmart. I've never been that type of corporate person in my life. I'm going to figure it out somewhere else. Or I'm going to change <coughs> brand and go with another brand. So he's, he, it's a good point. And I've said, you'd be sensible to not believe everything that a CEO says. Uh, I've got drunk one of them. No. Sorry, Mr. Carbon because I wouldn't give him my rip on sec. That is, that's mine. It does get quite dry in this booth. So, you be what I was saying is you'd be sensible to not believe everything that a CEO tells you, but it's better than what he's done, it's better than not replying and keeping what they want to do a secret. So he's being this Chris Hegedorn, who's the head of Hawthorne, he's being very open, he's replying to people on these forums via Facebook. So he's not, he's, he's not publicly hiding anything, but... What are their true goals? They may be being truthful, but CEOs aren't known for being 100% honest all the time, are they? Um, the next thing is that people might be wary of them, and it's a bad thing that this corporate takeover is occurring because the big competition. So what I've said is some companies are going to be worried that their sales are going to be affected because a company with big pockets, multi-billion pound company behind them, um, it's going to take up a bigger proportion of the market. Potentially bad, right? But if you're a grower, this is good because new products are going to be brought to market and probably made affordable as well. What would you say? What would you say if... if, if I don't know. If the Asda started selling all this shit, 
Mm. I, I don't know, because to be honest, I probably half agree with that comment that what you were saying. Would all of our customers start going to Asda to buy all the grow kit? <clears throat> Do, would they get all the knowledge that they currently get from the grow shops? Do Asda people know the difference between Heinz beans and Asda's own beans, and which is better tasting? They're just there to do a job. They're just there to sell products. But but, it, but even even as they're what they do sell, they only generalise in it in all aspects of what they do. Like clothing, mm. do we all fucking go to Asda to buy our clothes? No. No. If you're stuck, I don't know. Maybe if you you've went on a trip down south or up north, and you've lost your fucking luggage, yeah, you you know you can go to Asda and buy some socks, boxes. And if you look at a pair of pumps, well, saying that, we did P110 out the other week because they never had no grip, <laughs> grip to go to town. With all the George stuff. All the George gear. But you don't fucking buy it from day to day. And it's not the best gear, is it? Mm. So I suppose you could look at it that way, couldn't you? Mm. You know what I mean? Well, But my... then, would they open their own version of their hydro shops then? Mm. Would they have screw fix? Would they have hydro fix? Yeah, not, but not in Liverpool, they wouldn't. Mm, no. Um, probably not in Birmingham or London either. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> if you got your drift. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. You just wouldn't be able to open up a shop there. But my reply to those people are saying, oh, and I'm not doing a moany face, you've got legitimate concerns, but this is some of the bad things that people are saying. Oh, they're going to take me business, and I can't compete on this, and I can't do this, and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, if they spend as much energy in their company and new marketing techniques or new products or new ways to please the customers as they did on Facebook moaning about shit. Yeah. They probably have a multi-million pound company. Yeah. So my point is, stop wasting time and energy moaning about shit and go do some shit. Imagine what you could do if you spent the time that you spend on Facebook moaning and put that into, like, product development. You know what the thing is? Watch out, because people might say to us, we'll usually need to stop wasting time on podcast. I get enough messages, but we do this for free, and I I still enjoy doing it three years later because. Oh, oh are you every... are you get are you doing it? Is this for free? Is it? I like it when you touch me like. Oh. <laughs> no, not this part. You're paying me to do this part. Oh. <laughs> not not quite that free. Okay. Um, what was I saying? You could took me off then. That's because as soon as I mentioned money, yeah. you, you just changed focus, didn't you? It's like the whole phone group. No, I want to say some some. Some shit that is probably going to offend some people, but it's oh, there we go. Well, you do it all the time. No. I've been spending too much time with you. You know when you're moaning about this and that and the other because wine, wine, wine. He, they're going to take over this. Wine, wine, wine. They've just bought that company and they sound sell this. Blah blah blah. The universe doesn't give a shit. The, so you know when you're moaning about they don't. Oh, I came from a broke home and this kid who got fucking given millions of pounds, he's doing more successful than me. The universe doesn't give a shit. No. The universe cares about great products and how hard people work. The universe and it's it's harsh. To and fuck. how much money you can make? Exactly, it's harsh as fuck. But like when I say the universe, I mean like the world, the people in it. They, re they, they really don't give a fuck that your house just burnt down and you lost your business. Business will go elsewhere. The world keeps on moving. So. My point is, why spend that time moaning? Just concentrate on your own shit. Concentrate on innovating what you do. Concentrate on being a better person or business or whatever within yourself. And, and fucking ignore what everyone else is doing. Oh, you know what? That was very inspirational, that thing. You should have recorded it. Maybe I might have gone viral. <laughs> <laughs> like someone else who does inspirational videos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. Um, so... My example, I've got a little example of, of that harsh little shout. Um, I know of a New York taxi family. Uh, they ran a taxi company for family-run business for about 15 years, and they built themselves up, worked very hard, worked every hour that God could send, and he brought up a good business. Uber came along and wiped out that family business. Yeah. That's my point about the universe doesn't give a shit. The universe doesn't care that you've spent... 18 hours every day working to build up this family business for 20 years. The universe cares about what the people care about, what's good for them, yeah. what makes my life easier. Yeah. Are they going to carry on supporting a family business or are they going to do what makes their life easier? Yeah. They went to Uber. That family business got shut down and it's shit, but... It, it's just so you know what my life. top... You know what, well, you know what? You know what my top tip is then? Is for innovation for everyone. For all of the grow shop owners, for the growers, for the for everybody, is 
always be able to be prepared to innovate mm. and to be able to change your tactics and do something different and learn something new and as Steve said be prepared mm. don't carry on like and even the people that are successful don't carry on doing don't just sit on your laurels doing what got you to be the successful person because somebody else will copy that mm. become successful and mm. innovate and become more successful mm. so you just got to keep on innovating and the point that I'm trying to make in this sort of second part of the podcast is just stop all the whiny moany shit because mm. it doesn't get anybody anywhere whoever do you know anybody and like listen I will do this podcast for free forever you don't have to pay me if someone can name a time where whiny, whiny moany shit on social media got anybody anywhere no I don't know, so leave a comment if you ever know of anybody that, that did that. Are you finished whining and moaning? I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I got that off my chest, but it, it's got me nowhere apart from a little bit further into the podcast. Um, Adam said, sorry for the harsh words, but my love, what my loved ones mean more than money. That's, that's true, that's real. And Chris said he's just bought the domain name Hydrofix, so that's a nice one. <laughs> Right, we've talked about a bit of the shit uh, that this corporate takeover, but there's another. There's always two sides to every story, and there's some good. There's some good bits, and what, some of the things I've written down is that there's people in jail for growing a plant. Yeah, just I know people that listen to this don't have to really let that sink in, but I'll say it again anyway. There's people in jail for growing a plant. Mm -hmm. It's madness, and. The good thing from this sort of corporate, potential corporate takeover and in inverted commas, um, is big corporations are going to speed up complete federal legalization in the US and people are going to stop growing, going to jail for growing a plant. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? No, I don't think it is. I don't think no. it is. No, not when other, other countries across the world are already legal, do you know what I mean? Mm. It, it, it's so, just... and, and people may disagree with me. I believe that. The people with the big money coming in who can, what do they call it in, in the US, rally, or the, mm. the, 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 they do something for government and they push the government towards voting for federal legalisation. It's going to happen quicker when there's big money behind it and big companies. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. All it is is money. All it ever is is to do, do mm, with the money. That, that's what makes the world go round, yep. unfortunately. Yep. Um, another point I've made is the money invested by big corporations such as Hawthorne will increase rates, research and development into products and techniques that will massively improve growers' abilities uh, from the education and they'll be able to get the best from the plants. Now, what do you think? So, Hawthorne, I'll use Gavita as an example. Hawthorne have bought Gavita and, and pumped a good amount of money into it. Nobody knows, but they will have give their marks and research development. They'll give Theo a Don't, budget, don't you know how research. much it is? No, I don't think it's public information. I know. Go on. I can't tell you. <laughs> Can you tell me in secret later? I'll tell you okay. after. Text me. Okay. Um, but without doubt, they've given them some money. And what are they going to do with that money? They're going to research. They're going to research how to make <laughs> the sun in your room. Yeah. They're going to research how to how a single bottled new, not Gavita, but maybe Botanic NGH can come up with a single five litre bottle that has it all: PK boost, AB, micronutrients, trace minerals, everything in one bottle, and make it affordable for as many people as possible. That's not a bad thing, really, for the end consumer. Um, and I'm just reading up where it was up to there. So basically. It's going to improve the industry massively, isn't it? Um, is it, Tom? Is it? What do you think? Could they have a bad effect? I don't know. I don't know. That's sort of... I just don't know. Mm -hmm. You won't know until it happens. You really won't know, because I've had this conversation a million times over, and to be honest, the, the conversation after the time, I don't even have it anymore, because I'm just that tired of it. Mm. Because it's, I'm just sick of the speculation of the conversation. What's going to happen? What will happen? Yeah, it happens is all it, the time, doesn't it? Yeah. Like this UK coming out of the European Union. At the time that that was happening, you would have literally thought that the world was about to end. Cody's looking at you because he wants you to talk a little bit more into the mic. Okay. I know my face is beautiful, but you just need to look at the mic. Well, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, what was I saying? Load of rubbish as usual. No, that's your job. You, Coach, you got distracted then. 
It's a good job you make good beats. Um, Coachy beats. Anyway, I'll move on to the point that I've <laughs> forgotten. Marissa says, hey. Marissa. Hey, hey Marissa. Have you here, Marissa. Yep. Will you stop doing love and hearts? It's, it's just good, because it's something to do while you're talking about stuff. Well, I'm going to ask you a question on what I'm talking about, so if you can't answer it. Um, oh. Look, you're going to mess up shit now. Go on. Stop messing about. Go on, do ask your question and I'll answer it. No, it's not a question, actually. It's something that I want to say. Uh, say. And it's a good thing. It's, um, I just want to say to the people that are hating on the companies that have, in inverted commas, sold out, would you turn down 20, 50 or 100 million dollar, 100 million pound check. For what? For, to buy your company. You're allowed to still run it, but to buy the company. <coughs> so those days, 100 million pounds. MPK, 100 million pounds. 100 million pounds. MPK has, has got the best Instagram in the industry. I'm We've got the best Instagram anyway. I know, but someone wants to now give you £100 million. Pounds. They don't need to have £100 million because we've already got the best Instagram. But do you want to give you £100 million pounds so that they have the best Instagram? But, but so that does that mean that it's their products. company, though? It means that it's their company. Nah, they can get to a fuck, mate. That wounds me, that. Because uh, I thought, I, I honestly think that everybody would sell for £100 million. Nah. I'd rather just crack on, just smoking me spliff in me shop and <laughs> me studio with me boys. You're the wrong person to ask, because I know that's fucking, you'd be honest as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, fuck them. Well, let's say 250 million. It's, yeah, but then it's not my company then, isn't it? So, saying that though, yeah. You're allowed to yeah, run Oh yeah, well listen, this is what I do to them. You're allowed to run your company. I'll sell it, yeah, and then I'll backdoor them and I'll make MPK super technology and put it in the... <laughs> Put the <laughs> shop next door and go, huh, how'd you like them apples and pears, mate? Yeah. How would you like that one? Um, I'm going to say that they'll probably invest a few hundred million into lawyers and fucking do it all that way and then get all the legal team in. Let's see what's in the comments. Marissa said, in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would. Empire Limited. Carl, never sell out. Yes, Carl. I, I Listen, you know... Imagine, imagine, Carl, in it, you, you're coming to work in your own gaff and you're getting told to, to hurry up. What are you doing? Mm. Pack it in. Mm. Come on. I'll, I'll, well, we've got some news today. We're having a board meeting. Um, you, you're sacked. You're, your mate's sacked. Uh, we're getting this new team in. You know, that that wouldn't be much of a, much good, that would no. it? I've been told that there's another customer in the shop. Oh, go on. And we haven't got uh, Reggie here today. Okay, so go on then. Give me two minutes. Yes, go. Yes, Steve's right gone. Listen, people, tell Thomas, would you sell out for 100 million? Oh, Mr. Minister said she would turn it down, to be clear. I really want to talk about this point. Give me two minutes. No. So, Steve would sell out. Steve's a sell out. Yeah, I wouldn't. Don't get me wrong, I'd love the 100 mil. Seriously. But um, what would they do then with a hundred mil? Wouldn't be happy, and I'm happy right now. Look, look how happy I am. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? With me pal Coachy, Coachy Beats from Birmingham. So, yeah, I'm in my studio with Steve talking about these big. Companies who were looking to take over the world and take over my livelihood uh, and possibly affect me and my team and my family and everybody around me. Um, so, I don't know really. It's all a bit deep, 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 deep stuff. Um, so, I know I wouldn't sell out to help them gain in any way because obviously I do see. Uh, Sorry, whole phone group and everybody, but it is, it is sort of like a war against you, isn't it? Really, and you are using your little chess pieces to move, manoeuvre tactically across the globe and control everything and everything that you can make a good, nice, tidy profit out of. Um, but to be honest, if you ask me honestly. Uh, I don't really give a shit what you're up to, apart from it doesn't affect me and my team and my shit. But then everything that they do will eventually have that effect. So, because I'm not really 
don't really want to be bothered what other companies are doing about their business because you know if you pay too much attention to that fucking hell you you'd never have any time to pay attention to your own business do you know what I mean so then I don't know it's all a bit too complicated for my life <sighs> but obviously the facts and figures are there you know it's all about the big numbers and they're doing what they're doing and everyone's got their views and opinions on it Yeah, man. Health before money. You know you know what, though? See, these comments, these are my type of comments. Health before money. The time doing thing you like is happiness. Yeah. I think he's saying, basically saying happiness is the best. No, mate. Can't be selling out. Yeah, man. Money don't equal happiness. Yes. Never sell. These are my type of people, lah. See, and Steve, Steve's expecting me to say I'd sell out. It, fucking hell. Where did I get Steve from? Hey. Anyway, Hawthorne Group. There's a job. If there's a job opportunity, I'm looking to get rid of Steve because he's a sellout. He'd probably sell me out, wouldn't he? Hey. Next thing you know, I'll come in. I, I, I won't even have a job. Hawthorne Group will have marched in and took over the MPK. <laughs> Oh, Steve, man. So, yeah. And I, I don't know. It's all a bit too complicated. But definitely happiness and health before before money, innit? But obviously everybody needs money to survive and it helps you be happy. But would you would you sell out? Would you, would you sell out everything that you love and know to make, to make an extra... Or make a lot of money to stand a lot of money. Nah. Would you sell your soul to the devil? You know, I suppose it's that's a very same question, isn't it? I'm back. Everyone needs loads of comments when you're chatting on. Because they, they're all telling, telling me how much. Because I'm telling them how much of a sellout you are. <laughs> I haven't. Oh shit! Earphones are fucked. So basically, you was looking at me as if I'd like sell out, and I was looking at the comments then, and everyone's on my side. Yeah, because everyone's saying that they wouldn't sell out. That's what everyone's saying. I would turn it down, Marissa. Yeah, I I know Marissa would uh, turn it down because I know what where she's from and what she's about. Money doesn't equal happiness. Mm. Health before money. Free the plant. Free the plant. Oh, I've never seen that one. <laughs> I've, I'm, I've come in useful. Yeah. Um, for one comment. <laughs> Ever. 129 yeah. podcast time was useful for one comment. Um, oh, yeah, and I was saying that I'd probably, you'd probably sell me out if we'd come into the show and the, <laughs> the Hawthorne group sitting in my chair. Yeah. You're not Stay. Yeah. Yes, I am Mr. Hawthorne. <laughs> yeah. And I now do this podcast. <laughs> my Botanica, GH, yeah. and Gavita, and Can. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. all we sell in the shop. No, to be honest, I. Where are we up to? Yeah, 100 million. Um, and what I've said, there's all the haters that blast the owners for selling. Now, there's, you can have your own opinion, I wouldn't sell. And you can believe that until that check gets put in front of you and you've got you've got to cash it or not cash it. I don't think anyone truly knows what they would do. Um, and, but what I want to say is there's a lot of hate on social media for people that have sold. Uh, Why don't, don't you do cash? No. Oh, okay. You, there's a cash transaction yeah. um, there's a lot of hate and most recently Hawthorne acquired can can filters and um, the, I don't know the guy I don't know Dennis but from people that I respect in the industry there's a lot of love for him he's mm. worked his balls off for however many years along with his other partners he's got to a point he got offered some money and he decided to cash out now I don't think that's a bad thing no if he decided to not cash out and keep running his company great but why all the hate for people that are no selling problem. because like what what these guys have got to think is they could have grafted and grafted and grafted for 20 30 years but work seven days a week 18 hours a day had no family time thought 
that's me. I've built up a major company and being given a hundred million, uh, they can have that and they can either stay and continue to run can like I believe Kent uh, like I believe Dennis is doing and, and the guys at Gavita. Um or they can go away, set up a new company and do something even bigger and better than they were currently doing because they've got the money to. And that's a good argument. Or they can chill, they're fifty years old, they want to spend some time with the family, they wanna go and buy a yacht and they want to do fuck all for the rest of life apart from enjoy it and who can who can hold that against them so for, if anyone's listening and i doubt it's i don't use our because all of our listeners are just genuine certified people who are just lovely people i know that because you're listening to us but if there isn't a chance that someone's tuned in to the podcast and you <coughs> decide to give hate or discriminate or verb- verbally abuse on social media because they sold out to the Hawthorne group then Fuck off and listen to the podcast because you're just not the type of person that we want to listen to our podcast. Uh, it's wrong. Uh, it, it, you can't hate on someone that's grafted for 30 odd years to build up a company and decides to cash mm. in. Mm. So I completely disagree with anyone that's shown hate to these people. Everyone's got the right to their own opinion. Exactly. But to hate on somebody just because they've done a business... <coughs> business... What? Mm. Business, just, business just, deal? Yeah. You know, I don't know. Because to look after the family, I mean, the thing I think about is all the, all the people that are hating and sending hate messages to, let, let's just use Dennis as an example because he's the most recent person. I imagine he probably has got a bit of hate mail. Uh, and I'm going to assume he's got a family and kids. If if Cam suddenly went bust in five years' time, are those people that are hating on him going to send him money so that he can put food on his family's table? I don't think pay so. Pay his mortgage, pay nope. for his kids' school, pay nope. for whatever. Are they going to pay for his money? No. Nope. So... Then they haven't got a leg to stand on. Have they? These people, these people are making a decision based well, on. Why, the, also, why, based why, why are you talking about that? Why are you talking about the hating and blah blah blah? Internet trolls. Because um, I was speaking to one of my pals. I'm not going to mention who it was. I was speaking to one of my pals the other day, and he's doing very well. He's mm. got a new job, and it's with a company that some people hate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, 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 and we'll yeah. use this word hate because. Hate's a word that you, you know... You expend energy to hate something. Yeah, you know... We've already talked about how pointless it is to hate. A company... Uh, to, to, to hate on knowing a piece of information about a company who's done a deal. Mm. Now, that's just crazy. Yeah. And then to troll somebody over that is really sad. So if you're one of them internet trolls who troll people on the internet, yeah. I feel sorry for you. Do yourself a favour. Look at yourself... Um, have a proper look, look at y- yourself in the mirror. Go and buy a mirror if you yeah, can't. Yeah, and then think about, you know, the time that you're spending on hating and trolling people. Put that into your own energy to help yourself do yourself better and better yourself off because you're just letting yourself down and eventually that hate's going to consume you. Mm. What? Like if hate, it hasn't already. It doesn't, it doesn't achieve anything. No. I mean, for you as a person, everyone's selfish for themselves, really, aren't they? Yeah. So, anyone that's a hater or a troll, the hate does nothing to further you personally or in a business manner or professionally, you should say. No. Personally or professionally, hate and discriminate against people <laughs> and spending energy on social media does nothing for you personally. Mm. So why on earth would you do it? And you know what I found? You know if you find that somebody is a hater or a troll who works within your company, you're probably better off sacking them. You know why? Because the negative energy... Mm. That, that's what you'll see about that person. Yeah. So and and they they'd be no good like all of us. We're all just like yeah, we have a laugh and we we have a buzz on social media, and that's because that's the, what type of people we are. Mm. But what I've noticed, people who are haters or trolls or do that type of thing, the negative mm. you don't want. And if they're in your circle of friends or group, just push them to one side, just get rid of them because they're gonna affect you and your game. Misery loves company. Yeah. So there's probably a group of them. Yeah. Misery loves company. Yeah. They love to other people to tell them about how bad someone else is doing. You know what I'm going to set up? I want to set up a website for trolls, and it's it's it, they're all there together, and they can all just troll each, each other. other. Yeah, yeah, and they can all be made up and get troll points. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think that that could be a troll point. I think there's people out there who would actually do that. Who's the best troll? They can just go and troll themselves. Yeah. And then take them all off the actual legitimate forums where people actually want to spend good Anyway, money so that's money. enough for that rant. So, crack um, on. Where have you got up to? Oh, yeah, the actual problem I've written at the bottom there. Social media moaning. Is it the best time to spend? Is it the best way to spend your time? I anyway? think we've just covered that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the, and that's probably my last point there is 
if what we've said makes no sense to you and you think we've chatted a load of shit and you're all fucking against us or you're absolutely for us, there's one sentence that everybody ends up doing and cast your vote with the money that you spend. And I've, that's not my thing. I've, um, I've taken them off a few social media forums. If you've got an opinion, rather than shouting about it and, and wasting time and energy, cast your vote with the money you spend. And I'll tell you something, though. Can't, uh, Hawthorne seems to be buying uh, very big companies, very established companies that, without a shadow of a doubt, have great products. So if you choose then not to, to buy those products, then as a grower, you're leaving yourself in a bit of a mad situation because although there are other great lights and other great nutrients, um, you, you're withholding yourself from some very, very good brands. Okay. Uh, Eric said, let's read out some comments. Eric said, Dennis is the hardest working guy in Hydro for 15 years. I'm so f happy for him that he made millions. I am as well. Absolutely. I'm genuinely happy for anybody that works hard and makes money. And also, and also has also su always supported our company. Yeah. So it's from day dot. So, you know, well done. Take me out of to you. Congratulations. Be, and be and, done. and uh, Do us a favour, Dennis. I wouldn't mind a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> That's all an Instagram post that we did, isn't it? Yeah, that, that yeah. got the awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, of course. Um, Adam said, once we free the plant and its meds, you'll make money. So if the industry got on Joe Public's side in the UK or in the world, surely you could see change. Yeah. Marissa says, and Marissa's from the Revolution Diva, the, those two big lights. Oh. We've just gone to like a third test. Yeah. Um, and I have just left the building today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the first time, Marissa, I was really unhappy about it. He had to twist my arm. Sorry, Marissa, but, I didn't know they were yours, but they have gone. I know they're ours, but Marissa... I know, and, I know, but you bollocked me, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because they were mine. Yeah, but um, they... They're, Customers come first, so I get fucked off. No, it's not a customer. It's just yeah, yeah, it is a customer. Sorry, um, my friend <laughs> is is um, used doing a side by side. Yep. Um, Marissa says, and who's the side by side against? Gavita. Boom. Most trolls hide behind fake profiles, like the guy who posted our address online and fly over flyovers of our house. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We've got one on our Please. YouTube channel. Yeah. Parrot oh, yeah. Bebop. Yeah, Parrot Bebop on, on YouTube. Yeah. What a idiot. But the thing that trolls don't understand. You, you, you know what's funny though? He's watching every single <laughs> show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Till the end as well. Oh my and then God. hitting on the episode. But do you know what trolls don't understand? If they did, they just wouldn't do it. Is that people are now understanding that if you don't have trolls and you don't have haters, you're not doing very well. Yeah. So unfortunately, if you yeah. haven't got troll people who troll you, people who hate on you, then you need to work a bit harder because the only hate and troll people who are apparently doing well. Yeah. Uh, Eric said, "I know some people who might like your troll site. I th you could start it something. <laughs> You're gonna have to do something." There. Eric, you mean you will we'll start that one off? There yeah. we go. <laughs> Uh, trolls are our biggest fans. They really put in the hours. And that's exactly. I just you've baffled me there, Marissa, because I can understand how somebody would do flyovers of the house and finding an address and posting it. Spend some time doing useful shit. I mean, imagine all these trolls got together, thought, let's not troll, let's do something useful, and let's figure out how we can make the next best product or how we can do this or do that. And actually, do something good in the fucking world. Do you remember them little toy trolls with the hair? With the hair. I had all of them. They that, used to come in the bath with that's me. That's what they remind and me of. used to stick to That's what they remind <laughs> me of. We need to make little evil ones, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll put them on the desk of the YouTube <laughs> show saying, this is all for all the trolls out there. Yeah, I reckon we get one and we can just flick it in the face. Yeah. Marissa said it was their competitor and we traced it back to them. Listen, I'll nice. just give a word of warning out to people that think they're going to troll Revolution Diva. Greg is an engineering <laughs> bad man and he's got some IT skills. And listen, to be honest, on your wavelength, he's made these heavy speakers from scratch out of... I'm not going to ruin what he's done, but... For the studio? Yeah, for his, for his personal studio. No, no, speakers. no, Greg, send them to my studio because we need to test well, them. When Greg lands in the UK with Melissa, they're coming to the studio. Okay, kill. Cool. Of course. I look are. forward to it. Um, 
my point is, don't go troll on Revolution because Greg's a bad man and uh, he'll find you. He's, he's been known as the I bad man. He's like some seventh Dan in some heavy martial arts as well, so stay away from him. Oof. He makes kick ass lights. <laughs> well. I'm, I'm not going to say nothing about him. <laughs> Let's keep it dumb. Yeah. Um, that's my last point anyway. Oof. Um, I want, want to make a second to last, a PS point. I want to make a PS point. And we're not going to name this person, but I need to make this point to round up the podcast. There's a UK guy, and he has started working for a company. Okay. And he is getting a lot of hate and a lot of people trolling him. I've just mentioned that before. Have you? I, I, was I here? Yeah. Was I? You've just, just been wasn't. talking. When we were talking about trolls. Been... See, this is the problem, is communication. You know, we're sitting on top of each other practically, and he still doesn't listen to me. Oh, it's just because of all... You and knees know. in the background. Need to keep it down. <laughs> Tell them to. Coachy, you're in charge here, bro. You know, the sound levels has risen there. <laughs> um, you're getting a lot of hate, so I want to make a point, and it's my final promise, it's my final point. Well, that's what I was saying about the trolls, you got Muppets. Is is my point. If we, if you had a, an inverted commas because it's some people's opinion, a bad company taking over a lot of the industry. Would you want that company to be filled with people that you know nothing of and you don't know them and they're never going to come and visit yet and everything says very secretive and private? Yeah. Or... Would you be proud that somebody who you've known in the industry, yeah, has, has got that job? And is in that company? Yeah. And is a good guy and has got friends within the industry mm. and all of a sudden... Everything's not so secret. Yeah. So do yourselves a favour, because if I find out it's one of you who are trolling my pal, I'm going to get you. Okay. So enough said. Is that fair enough? That's absolutely fair enough. Sound. So the point of the podcast, don't troll, don't hate on successful people, or don't hate on anybody no matter what, because it's a waste of energy. And I think the, the, the big ethos through this whole podcast is... And I'm going to put you on the troll site. Yeah, the troll site, that's going to go and get made probably in the next few minutes. Um, the universe doesn't give a shit, all right? So focus on your own shit, be successful at what you do, and, and good things will come. And stop focusing on what everyone else is doing, just let's make good shit together. And that's me done. So that's the done. Um, make sure you're checking out the Hydroponics show, it's MPK show on YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe, share, like, add it, tag it. Baggy. Yeah, everything. <laughs> um, Instagram it, MPK. Yeah, the Instagram's on the screen for people watching it. At MPK underscore hydroponics. Um, check out the YouTube channel. It's on at 6 o'clock tonight, fri every Friday. Uh, if you just want to add me on Instagram, I am top cropper 82 oh. Do not Very be... Very secretive profile. Oh. You've got you to you be accepted. I know, so... It doesn't if, happen straight away. No, it doesn't. So start okay. adding now. It, yeah. takes, it takes a while. I'm actually getting people messaging me going, please, uh, can you ask them to add me? <laughs> I'm going, yeah, go on, I'll let them know. So, yeah, um, make sure you check out the show. Check out our new webpage, www.mpktechnology.co.uk. Uh, next week, we are going to be back with a Grow Show Tip Show. Oh, is, that, is it your podcast? Yeah, it's just it's just tips, quick tips, quick, quick tips. tips, quick tips. Are we going to do, do, you tip, want to tip, do tip, a minute tip. a piece again? Yeah, we'll do a minute a piece. You're going to get a timer. I'm going to buy a timer. Yeah. And you're going to get a minute and you're going to give you top 10 top tips. Yeah, top 10 top tips. So it should be a 20 minute podcast. 20 minutes. It's going to be like 8 Mile, the battle. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's an 8 Mile battle. Yeah, okay. It's, it's the Wirral battle, the Toxteth battle. Thomas faces Steve. Yeah. One minute, ten top tips. Let's go. And if you get to the last round with me, I get your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> do you and think you this is? Have, um... Hey, what do you think this is? The mobile? <laughs> hey. Okay. Um, check out the MPK show tonight for everyone watching live. Yeah. For everyone that's listening Friday. To fr oh yeah, we've got to say the MPK show is a hydroponic show. It's on a Friday. Friday six o'clock. And has been out for what episode we'll do? Episode nine goes live tonight. Yeah, so if you I haven't think. watched any of it, you've got na you'll have eight episodes to catch up on. Make sure you watch episode nine tonight. The plot's starting to thicken. 
isn't he? Yeah, he always is. What's going on, Steve? Abductions. Abductions. Um, we'll see no more. So apparently, I know there's a the scene starting to get a bit more intense as well. Teeth. We've got some grow tips and grow grow jokes yeah. um, to, to to liven up the show, and we've also put in a storyline in where somebody gets kidnapped, don't they? They do. And um, certain things happen. It is, and of course, we want all your feedback. Um, comments if you like something please let us know we always love it when if you, you don't it. let us know if let us know. if he's going to give us shy, constru- shy feedback give us constructive shy feedback yeah. please. it's shit because you do this and yeah. we don't like it it's shit because the lighting's crap and it's shit because Thomas's voice is terrible it, it, you know please give us some constructive so we can improve being two bellend scousers isn't constructive criticism we're always going to be we're scousers. always going to be always it's going to be bellend so <laughs> unfortunately you'll have to unsubscribe and f- piss off yeah we're getting all by the way we're getting all our swearing up now because I'm not allowed to swear on YouTube so that if, if we're yeah. wondering why we're quite explicit it's because Oh, we can just swear on this and it's great. Yeah. Uh, we're going to leave it there. Yeah. Um, Thanks for watching. Thank you always for watching. Thank you for listening. And um, we'll be back next week. See you later. See you later. See you later. See you later.